Marco, what happened? It just went wrong. Um, David Mack got past me at the start of the race, dived up the inside. Didn't think that was too much of a problem, thought we'd get him back. Um, bit of brake testing, I think, was going on into the chicane and um, damaged the bumper a little bit. Then had a few gearbox problems, started falling back. And then finally, um, an FF Corsa car managed to take me out, so I uh, had to fall, fall in and no points. Okay. Car's almost there, the uh, suspension's a bit damaged, we can get it nearer straight. So we just go out and collect points this time, hopefully. Yes, definitely. More points is, is what you need now with that championship battle. There's a big gap now, so it's a, a big race to go. Danny, this is your first season in GT Cup. It seems to be going pretty well for you so far. Yeah, it's not going too bad. Now, you know, when joining a championship like this, when there's so many older drivers, experienced drivers, are you finding that, does that make you nervous or not? Uh, I've never really thought about it. Once you're out there, everyone's as good as everyone else, aren't they, really? So. Well, clearly the baby still hasn't come yet. Keith Webster is on the grid, leading the championship currently after that great result earlier on. Marco Pollen, however, his DNF cost him severely. He's dropped from second to tenth in the championship. Next couple of rows, well, it's the FF course Ferrari party by the looks of things. We've got three of these guys up here on the grid. Then we've got the Kermit Green machine of Danny Wynn Stanley. He really does need to get some points in the bag as well. Currently running joint second in the overall championship with our pole sitter Alex Martin. So again, a good result is important for him. Here with your full race commentary is David Addison. Thanks, Charlie. So we're just about set for the second GT Cup race of the weekend. Alex Martin, the man on pole position, he leads them away behind the pace car for this rolling start. He shares the front row with Andy Ruin. Alex Martin, a winner at Thruxton. Andy Ruin, a winner here earlier on in the weekend. Leon Price and Danny Winstanley are on row two. Gary Eastwood and Steve Quick on row three. Just ahead, starting seventh of Keith Webster's BMW. Further down the order, Chris Bentley and man to watch, trying to recover after that spin at the first corner of race one. He's got Colin Simpson for company on the eighth row in the spectacular Marcos. And it's David Bottrell, the much-travelled Yorkshireman from up near Croft, who is last on the grid as we're about to go racing them. The pace car brings them down through Russell, bit wheel bail for the pit lane, and then we're going to be in business with the two Porsches at the front of the grid. Alex Martin very keen to get a win out of this after leading, but going off the road in race one. Looking back from Keith Webster's BMW, looking forward now from Marco Pullen's Ferrari. Marco, somebody else frustrated in race one when he was tapped off the road, but the lights that are red at the moment go out now. The second GT Cup race of the weekend gets underway, and it's a good start by Alex Martin from pole position, but Andy Ruin tries to stand his ground on the outside as they go through Riches for the first time. On board with Pullum, and looking back from Keith Webster's BMW, diving in towards Sear, turning their way through the tight right-hander. Gary Eastwood in the black Ferrari, losing out. Marco Pullum goes around the outside of him, you can see those new curbs put in on the outside of Sear Corner. If you keep repeatedly going behind them, you get a driving standards flag and then a drive through penalty. Pull and losing out as launching himself up on the inside there was Gary Eastwood and he's got himself ahead of the BMW of Keith Webster as well. Great bit of driving from Gary Eastwood and now Pull and levels with Webster. Runs out of road, gets himself onto the curb and onto the dirt. Through the bomb hole for the first time. Looking back now from Webster's BMW and you can see the two orange cars nose to tail there, look. Keith Webster's BM just ahead of Marco Pullen's Ferrari, turning their way then for the first time through Coram Curve, down towards Russell, and Alex Martin it is who leads the way, but there, second, getting better and better all the time is Danny Winstanley with the TVR, and in third is the race one winner, Andy Ruin. Keith Webster still under huge pressure though here from Marco Pullen as they come across the line, through goes Martin in the lead there with a bit of a gap back to him in second place is Winstanley, third is Andy Ruin for the moment not being able to make further progress but as they come down towards Riches Andy Ruin eyes up a chance on the inside but he wasn't really close enough to have a go there former Ferrari racer now very rapid in Porsches keeping at bay indeed the Ferrari opposition as they turn through Sear Corner but the gap's down again between second and third and there's no gap at all between Webster there in the BMW and Marco Pullen who is right up behind him these two battling on track, battling as well within the championship. And this is Marco Pullen's view as they go down the Revit straight once more. Meantime, John Taylor there, number 42, Porsche. Sandwich between Porsche and KTM. McCarthy trying to find a way past his Robert Koenig's 996 shape, 911. And Tom Andrew there, look, going around the outside of him in the KTM. And David Bottrell's very incongruous, almost historic class, 944 Turbo, joining in the party as well. Doesn't look as modern as the cars around, but he can still hold its own against the Group 3 opposition. 
powering his way out of Russell there, number 88, Leon Price, as Tom Andrew dives up on the inside of Robert Koenig. Now, this is the Group 3 lead battle. They're all queuing up. Look, at the moment, at the head of that little gaggle, you've got John Taylor's Porsche. That's in Group 2, so ignore that. But now the KTM has worked his way through into the Group lead, and it's getting away from the rest of them. Keith Webster, in the meantime, cannot get away from Marco Pullen. These two tied together still, coming out of Riches, up towards Sear. Pullen goes down a gear, turns right, rides the curve on the inside of the corner, tries not to make the car run too far out wide on the exit of Sear. Repeated use of those curves gets you this driving standards flag and then a drive through penalty if you're not careful. So Pullen, careful at Sear, now has an opportunity to look perhaps for the inside going into the SS. He thought about it, then thought better of it as well. Turning into the left and then right handed elements, these two tied together, and Webster almost being given a little hurry up tap there by Marco Pullen. Head still, you've got the Ferraris running together. These of Leon Price and then Gary Eastwood behind him. Keith Webster, they turn their way out of the bomb hole up towards Corum Curve, has just been able to extend that gap by a length or so. Marco Pullen is brave through Corum though, and he closes right up again as they dive down towards Russell. The BMW able to work better at certain parts of the circuit, and another little nudge in the back there. Marco Pullen saying, Come on, hurry up, I'm quicker than you, just get out of my way. They're level as they come over the line, they're almost leaning on each other, the mirrors almost clash, but as they go past the pits, it's still Keith Webster on the inside who's going to claim the place. I think, no, Marco Pullen goes around the outside. Fantastic move. Break desperately late, he had the longer, slower line, but he made it work, and so Marco Pullen moves through ahead of Keith Webster, and that was a very brave bit of driving as Colin Simpson's Marcos here fends off the Venturi of Paul Cope, another a rather elderly car that you can trace the Venturi back to the mid 90s in the early days of the BPR Global GT Championship. The first championship, Stefan Rattel, rather, was for the Gentleman Drivers Series in the Venturi, and this car of Paul Cope has been around the block many a year now. It has done an awful lot of racing, but Paul, a great enthusiast, is right there on the tail of Colin Simpson, and he's under pressure as well from the Michael Simons BMW that dives up on the inside, and the big BMW muscles its way alongside and then spins, round it goes. Michael Simons loses it, slithers off the road, and all of that, I think, was just breaking too late going into to see it. The car was unsettled, he couldn't quite hang on to it, round went the back. This, though, is the very lonely Group 3 leader now, Tom Andrew, as the overall race lead is getting more and more precarious for Alex Martin because he's got this green TVR filling his mirrors now. Danny Winstanley, who has yet to win in the championship this year, but he's great value in this car, comes across the line, and now he's looking very toey indeed because he knows a win might be his. Goes to the inside, goes to the outside. Everywhere he goes, there's a Porsche in the way. Alex Martin here defending for all he's worth. Up towards Sear Corner, Danny Winstanley thinks about making a move to the inside, but there's no real opportunity. Takes a tighter line, though, uses the kerb, and then tries to get the better drive coming out of the corner. Keith Webster, in the meantime, now having lost that place to Marco Pullen, gets a bit sideways. Does he go through the corner? Yes, he does. Rattles onto the grass. Meantime, Colin Simpson's Marcos there, just ahead of Paul Cope in the Venturi as they go out of Riches up towards Sear. And two of the older cars in the race still having a great battle. Colin Simpson, huge enthusiast, doesn't always have the best of fortune with this Marcos, but it goes well, and Paul Cope, I'm afraid, loses it coming out of Sear. Kicks up plumes of dust as he launches himself onto the grass on the dirt on the infield. And it was a punctured tyre that was the reason for Keith Webster going off. And somebody else in the wars is Rupert Koenig, because Rupert Koenig's Porsche spins at Riches. It's all happening, apart from for Tom Andrew. He's about the only man in the race who's lonely. He leads the way comfortably in Group 3, and now Alex Martin has been able to shake off Danny Winstanley. So, as he makes his way past the stricken BMW of James McAllister there, parked by the side of the road, now Alex Martin looks as though he's going to score a second win of the season. Turns his way down through Russell, rides the curve and accelerates up towards the line now, but Danny Winstanley has faded away over the last few laps. He's getting on for five and a half seconds back as Alex Martin takes the chequered flag to win for the second time this year in GT Cup. Danny Winstanley second, Andy Ruin coming across the line for third, and Marco Pullen here is going to be victorious in Group 2. That's great news for him in the championship. Confirmation of the results, though, a win for Alex Martin, his second of the year ahead of Danny Winstanley and Andy Ruin. Gary Eastwood fourth ahead of the similar Ferraris of Steve Quick and Leon Price. Marco Pullen seventh with Colin Simpson, Francis Gallison, and Rupert Martin rounding out the top ten. In the groups, well, Group 1, Porsche, TVR, Porsche. Alex Martin ahead of Danny Winstanley and Andy Ruin. Marco Pullen victorious in Group 2, ahead of Francis Gallison and Rupert Martin. And Group 3, a win this time for Tom Andrew, ahead of Dan Norris-Jones.
<laughs> well, congratulations, Alex. That definitely went more your way. Yeah, it did. Uh, <laughs> no stupid mistakes this time. Yeah, I was really happy with that. But uh, Danny Winstanley was on your bumper the whole way. Yeah, he, he, uh, he kept me honest, that's for sure. It was about halfway through the race. Had an engine splatter and he just started getting closer and closer. And um, yeah, he's, uh, he did a good job. He's a good driver. Very impressed. Marco, well, congratulations, first of all. At the, the start of that race, you were having a really good battle with Keith. It was getting close. I thought it was going to be a, a, a repeat of the first race where I get edged onto the grass, but no, it was clean and um, just managed to, on the fourth lap, I can't remember now, but managed to keep it in there and get past. Congratulations, Tom, your second group win in the GT Cup. Yeah, thanks very much. It's a uh, bit of a lonely race, but I'm into it. I love, uh, love winning. Hope to... Uh, Bag some more before the end of the season. As far as the championship's concerned, Alex Martin has just a one point advantage now over Danny Winstanley in Group 1, with Gary Eastwood in third. Group 2 still being led by Keith Webster, Michael Duane second, and then the shared car of Colin and Sam Mole, the KTM, is third. And Tom Andrew heads the way in Group 3 ahead of Dan Norris Jones and David Bottrell. But as far as the overall situation is concerned, leaving Snetterton, it's Keith Webster in charge. Alex Martin second ahead of Winstanley and Mick Duane with the Moles fifth and Marco Pullen after his DNF in race one, only sixth ahead of Tom Andrew. Well, that was another couple of excellent races, as close as ever from the GT Cup. And that really does leave the championship wide open. So we're going to have to wait and see what happens next time when we'll be on the fabulous Grand Prix circuit at Brands Hatch.